Uh, coin tossing is, is pretty close to fair. You know, that one in a hundred, in order to detect that in a coin tossing experiment, the way that sampling goes, in order to, de to detect an error of size, you know, of size, you know, one over n, one over a hundred here, it's 0.51, that's, you know, in the second decimal place, it's one over a hundred, you know, tenths, hundreds. It, it, it takes about a quarter of a million flips in order to detect that, because the error, the fluctuations of error go like square root of n. So in order to detect something that's, you know, uh, that's a hundred, you, you need something, some multiple of n squared, a hundred squared, which is 10,000, but then, you know, th three sigma gets you up to about a quarter of a million flips. Uh, so, and people have suggested that I could test my theory by organizing a national coin flip. And I could, there are a lot of math teachers who think it would be fun to do. But the idea of calibrating that data, it's just my idea of a nightmare. You know, organizing the kids and you know, you know somebody might get heads and tails mixed up. And since it's a very small effect, uh, you know, a small bias of, in, in, of any sort would completely invalidate the data. So uh, for me, flipping a coin is still a very, very good way to generate a random outcome. My favorite sport is cricket in uh -huh. Australia. And the toss of a coin at the start of a cricket match is extremely important. Yep. Um, and, what, and one captain gets to choose. If I'm that captain, I should make every effort, should I, to catch a glimpse of what way the coin started up and yep. say that. that. That sounds right to me. Every year uh, when we have our Super Bowl and the, the networks come to Susan Holmes, Richard Montgomery and I and say, would we do two minutes on, is the to coin toss in the Super Bowl fair? Especially if the game ends up tied on, you know, sudden death type playoffs, the coin toss makes a huge difference. And uh, uh, Super Bowl coins, everything I said is, all the numbers I told you about are for an American half dollar. The math allows us to do it for any coin you like. Super Bowl co coins are specially minted coins and they're much larger and probably the effect is bigger and, uh, and, uh, than, than 0.51. Uh, Anyway, uh, but you're, you've got it. Uh, try to g catch a glimpse of how it starts out. Or if you're making the flip, you know, you can see, I'll be fair, there's a head and a tail. Start it heads up. Coins are not perfectly symmetrical objects because they have heads on them and patterns and designs. Does that uneven distribution of weight affect their flight through the air? The answer is no. It's a wonderful question, but we both can prove it and tried it. So you might think, does the weight, does the you know, homogeneity of the coin matter? You can prove that coins can't be loaded to change their odds. And I didn't believe it, even though it's a theorem. Uh, so I made coins of which the top part were balsa wood and the bottom part were lead and then flipped them. And you know, you can just, and it's because it's rotationally invariant. If you let them land, if they were spinning around, it would be a huge difference. But uh, coins flipped in the air, uh, it's, there's no, uh, you can't, the inhomogeneity doesn't come in, in, in at all. It is true that the analysis that I just told you about, I neglected air resistance. And that's the kind of thing we have to do in applied math all the time. Now there is air. And my physics colleagues, you know, we were trying to think, does air resistance matter? And they took me to the top of Stanford's Hoover Tower and if you drop a penny from the top of Hoover Tower, it goes like a leaf. I mean, it doesn't just go down. You know, there's air. And, and we calculated some back-of-the-envelope things. And I think for a coin flip this way, uh, you know, the kind of usual way we flip a coin, the air resistance is, a, again, a third-order effect. But uh, it's, that's different than being able to prove a theorem. Doing the mathematical analysis of a coin tumbling in air is a whole different ball game. It's the unsolvable Navier-Stokes equation. Uh, it's very, very complicated to do that math. And somebody recently tried it with coins dropped in water. And uh, there, boy, it's pretty complicated. And I, I don't remember what the, what the bottom line was. But since I'm not planning to do any experiments underwater, I didn't focus friend with a stopwatch and I went one, two, three, flip, one, two, three, flip. And uh, we got sort of synchronized and so he could tell how long it took the coin to come down and from that I could tell how fast it was going. Now it took three hours to get that data.